anyone. There might be a couple people already here since I announced in the Discord that I'd be going live. But to give everyone a chance to finish showing up well, and know that I'm live, I'm going to quickly send out a tweet. Um, okay, I think... Yeah, that about covered it. My tweet was sent. We are in good stream health. I feel like I'm particularly paranoid about that now after the problems we had uh, last time during Hollow Knight. Um, but I think we should be good now. I hope. Um, so let's see here. I've got all my stuff mostly ready. I'm gonna be using, well, I may not be using that. I should have been like featuring that in my, uh, in my camera. So we've got my plastic scraper, which came with my, uh, crystal clear stamper, which is what I'm gonna be using today. Both of those, as I've shown you guys before, get stored in this little cylinder. So, actually, no, let me grab a couple paper towels. Paper towels are usually pretty important when stamping because it can get pretty messy. And you do need to clean off the stamper plates in between each stamp. I also... My nails just have a clear coat on them because I did wash my hair this morning and I don't like washing my hair with naked nails. So I guess the first order of business is to take that off. So grab a little bit of cotton out of here. My monster salon sized roll, which I've had for damn near 10 years now. Liz, hello, and clever username, and boyo. Oh, thank you, clever username. I, uh, I figured you guys probably didn't want to stare at my rollers for however long this stream is. For some reason, I got it into my head to do a rod set when I washed my hair, and so it's not, not fit for public consumption, probably. Little Swan Baby and Sandrine, or Sandrine, hello. Thank you for joining us. I'm just gonna be, oops, got a little bit of a, let me tighten this up a little bit. My super ghetto stabilization system for my lamp here. I'm just gonna be taking off this clear coat real quick. Shouldn't take very long. Um, hello, Sacrista, welcome. I usually, when I'm washing my hair, like I said, I don't like leaving my my nails naked because it takes a long time to wash it and detangle it and then whatever kind of style I'm doing afterwards. So I'll usually just do a quick base coat and top coat and that keeps my nails from getting so waterlogged which can definitely make them weaker and prone to breaking. Yeah, I mean, I've only done it a couple times which is kind of ridiculous because I have like five or six different like sizes and sets of rollers and uh like the results are always really cute but doing it and then like waiting for them to dry and then like <clears throat> dealing with the day that you're sitting around with a head full of rollers um yeah but hopefully it turns out awesome you guys will be able to see i'll probably take them out tomorrow un unless it gets like super rainy out because that's just likely to frizz out my whole head and waste all my efforts. If it's super, super rainy tomorrow, I may wait until Saturday to take them out. But I will be streaming tomorrow and Saturday. Um, tomorrow afternoon, like early afternoon, hopefully even a little earlier than this, I'm going to be playing a little bit of Hollow Knight. And then Saturday is going to be my birthday stream. I've got some really awesome nails planned because, of course, you have to have awesome nails on your birthday. And then, of course, normal 
Sunday evening Hollow Knight stream also. So we'll see. This will be the longest like stretch of days in a row that I've like streamed every day. So we'll see how that actually works out. It seems like a good idea right now. Hello, Prismatic Sky. Thank you for joining us. Um, it seems like a good idea now, but I, I do expect it to be kind of, kind of wearing. I mean, streaming takes a surprising amount of energy, I found, but today's stream should be fairly short. I, I don't know exactly how long it's going to take doing this on camera, but today's stream shouldn't be that long. Tomorrow's stream will be moderately sized. And then, um, I'm not sure how long Saturday's stream will be. Sunday's stream is the problem. Like last Sunday. Yes, you guys are getting the gift. It's a gift for me too. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. Um, the Sunday stream seems to be the one that's a problem. Last Sunday, um, I ended up going till I believe like one in the morning. <laughs> so, which I'm, I'm usually up until one, if not much later than that, but streaming for that long streaming for i think it was like six and a half hours wow but it was worth it it was super fun those of you who maybe were here know that i got an awesome gigantic huge host and uh made a lot of progress in the game too surprisingly so all right nails are clean nails are a little bit shorter than last time i did uh file them down after I took off the uh, reciprocal gradient. And the next order of business is to decide what exactly we're going to be stamping today because I have not decided. I've, I've somewhat narrowed it down. But we have several choices here. So let's, let's kind of try to organize these together. Okay. So we've got kaleidoscope plates, illusion plates, artist plates, and pearl plate. So first one I'm going to show you guys. Actually, let's turn it so that it's properly right side up for you guys. Um, all these ones that I'm looking at right now are from my Mo U London collection of plates. I've also got quite a few Conad plates, some Bundle Monster plates, and a couple other little weird off brands. But I really like the Mo U plates because, like, Conad has full nail designs, but the length of my nails is usually a lot longer than the uh, full nail designs on the Conan plate. So excuse this one in the corner that's still kind of dirty. This is, what did I say this was? Pro, pro number 20. Um, this is one of the options I'm considering. And I haven't picked the color that I'm going to be stamping with either because I feel like I should pick the design first. And... I'm kind of leaning less toward these today than I was the other day when I was looking through my plates and trying to decide. But we'll see. Let me know if anything particularly sticks out to you. This is uh, the artist plate, number one. And you can see it's still got the blue cling film on it. I've, I have this plate. I've had it for quite a while, and I've never used it. Uh, the last plate had a lot of like swirly designs. This has kind of more of a geometric type of thing going on you like the circles reverse stamping i'm i'm not probably doing reverse stamping today because that can that can take a while i do really like the results when i've done it in the past um i really really love like the poinsettia that i did for christmas um but probably just regular stamping today i was thinking it would be another slight comparison that whatever color i do pick i could do one hand with the uh original omg color and one hand with the flashback color so we can see how they compare as far as stamping although i anticipate that they're going to be pretty close um this is illusion plate number five and this is more kind of swirly and like almost like hypnotic type of designs and you can, it's pretty easy to see which ones I've used. I mean, even the ones that I somewhat clean up when I'm done using, there's always that little bit of residue left over. Yeah. I have, when I first bought my Moyu's uh, Clever, I got one of their rectangular squishy ones, but the opaque kind. 
And then later down the road, I got the clear smooshy one because when you really want to like center a design on your nail, I mean, back in the olden days, we all had to kind of just guess and wing it, but the clear ones make the placement so much easier. This is also an illusion plate. This is number four. And it's more kind of like geometric illusion designs. I, I like this one a lot. This, uh, this one in the corner here. And it, it's kind of probably hard to tell on camera if you're not, if you're familiar with plates, you already know. But like the, the area that appears lighter is the indented part, is the engraved area where the nail polish is going to go. So the lighter parts are the parts that would have polish. The first three in the second row. So this one, two, three. Yeah. I like those two. I like this one too because it's kind of like uh, Twilight Zone. Reminds me of. Okay, then we've got two more here that I'm considering. Uh, this is Kaleidoscope 06. And this is actually, I was just talking about the poinsettia that I did for Christmas. This is the image that I used for the poinsettia. Um, probably was maybe not intended, probably maybe. I swear I say that so often. Um, probably was not intended to be a poinsettia, but I thought it worked out really well. And on this plate, the one I was probably considering the most was this one up here in the corner. Yeah, I love all the kaleidos. I love the, all the illusions and all the kaleidoscope. I mean, I think I've said before, if I won the lottery, I would just buy freaking everything nail polish related because <laughs> having to like use willpower and not buy everything like my wish list of mo you london stuff is like so long and they keep coming out with new plates every week so it just keeps getting bigger and bigger um and then this is kaleidoscope plate four this is another one that i've never used before and uh more like geometric symmetrical type of designs and i'm probably going to be going over black with the hollow so like i do want some of the black to show through some of these i feel almost like they have too much area uh, of the stamp like this one like so much stamp that barely any base color is gonna be left showing through oh hanging out with you huh so i don't know you guys I'm I'm very indecisive. I've literally had these out for a couple days. I think I'm gonna not do that one. That was number four. This one I'm still, or rather, this one I'm still really thinking of. And this one. Music gal, hello. Um. All right, I think that illusion one's going to go in a reject pile. Well, not a reject pile, but a not right now pile. Of course, too, I don't want some of these that I've never used. Almost every time you stamp, it's a little bit of a learning curve to see what that particular design wants you to stamp like. Yeah, I think we're going to go. I'm thinking either this one or this one or maybe this one. No, I think I'm gonna go with with that one if I can if I can get a nice clean stamp on it. Now the question is, what color are we going to make this one? You like the rotating squares, still clever. If this doesn't stamp, I may change my mind. Like when I was very first w gonna do the poinsettia, which I ended up using this one. My first tests were actually with this, and I mean you can see. You, you obviously can see the design, but once you actually stamp it and see it, it's kind of a little bit of a different situation. So, all right, I'm still undecided on a color, but we can contemplate that while we get my nails ready because we are going to want things very dry so that we don't smoosh our base color when we apply the stamp. 
Straw poll. No, I think I'm going to go with this one, unless I have problems with it. If I have problems with this one, then I'll do a straw poll. I'm just going to give my nails a quick swipe with polish remover, just to make sure all that... Uh, I mean, I just I just took off my polish, but I was using actually regular polish remover, so I still like to give them a swipe with acetone before I get started on my manicure. And just quickly under the underside also. I'm hoping it turns out well. I'm hoping that the uh, the new OMGs don't prove me a liar. I'm expecting them to stamp like the original. And uh, if they don't, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Oh, you're on a break at work? I remember there were some people at work that, like, when I worked in an office, it's like there's three kinds of people. The kind of people that take their, their regular break, break, like, like clockwork, on schedule, just, you know, whatever. Then there are the people that never took a break. Then, of course, there are the people that take smoke breaks and take advantage of everything. Oh, also, look what I found. It's the new bottle. The new bottle of Oont. Ready for takeoff. PC is not cooperating watching on your phone. Hi, Coney. Computers are so frustrating. I even was having, well, minor issues the other day. And some of them I didn't even realize until like I was done streaming um what was that it seems like people are still getting rid of their fireworks um i had to use a slightly different game capture and it introduced a little bit of lag to my audio which was kind of frustrating and a couple people mentioned it during stream but then a couple other people said it was fine but then when i watched it back i definitely could notice it so I hope that I have that fin fixed for uh, tomorrow's stream. A speech therapist. That's interesting. When you don't have students. So probably like around their lunchtime or just in between when they're scheduled. Oh, the internet at work hates Twitch. Um, and I'm, I'm not actually recording a tutorial for this, guy, so I won't have to split my attention between you and my other camera. I figured I would just do a stream and uh, do it in real time. Let's actually, let's get a napkin here. Paper towel, because that's always helpful. And I'm going to just get started with my base coat. I'm so glad that I found this new bottle, you guys, but I felt so dumb when I finally did find it because I was so close to finding it last weekend when I was looking for it. I thought that I probably put it somewhere logical and I did, but then I happened to stack a bunch of other things up in front of it and it was just like, it was almost right where I thought it was, but it was just um kind of obscured by all this other stuff in front of it. So one more example of why I need to get my stash organized because there should just be like a drawer or a, or a shoebox full of, you know, refills and like my bottle of, my master bottle of Sesh V really shouldn't just be perched on the edge of my desk. That should be put somewhere more out of the way. I mean, it's out of the way. It's not like my main desk. It's like I've got the this surface, which, you know, goes all in front of me. And then there's like a hutch. And then like right next to where the hutch is attached to the desk, there's a little tiny ledge. So I keep it on that ledge. But I mean, that's not really designed for storage. So I should find a, a better home for it. And you could probably tell a little bit that the, the staining on this pinky is not as bad as it was. So just a little bit of time another manicure, a little bit more polish remover, um, and it's looking a lot better than it was. Not, like I said, that it was the worst staining ever, 
But, um, I'm glad to see that it's fading quickly. Because even a little bit of staining, if it's, if it's a really, like, a sickly color, like, like, greens and blues especially, uh, kind of tend to bug me more than if my nails are just a little bit yellowed. Yeah, I, like I said, uh, musical, I hope, I hope they live up to my expectations. See, like, last time when I was just doing the comparison swatches, I had very, very low expectations. I, uh, I didn't want to be disappointed, and so I had low expectations, but now they've shown me that they're good, and I have high expectations, so I don't want them to, uh, to fail me now. Um, I think, I think to hopefully make sure my nails are properly dry, let's just do my left hand first. Well, actually, let's, let's give the base coat just another minute to dry. Sometimes it's slightly hard to tell, like, without touching it, which I try to avoid. Um, but I'll do, yeah, like, two coats of black, and then a top coat, and then I'll do my right hand, and then hopefully will be dry enough not to mess things up. This is also a very soft stamper, which should help. Well, fa fairly soft. I shouldn't say very soft, because there are softer ones. I know it's hard to see how much pressure I'm actually applying. Um, but I mean, like, compared to the old-fashioned Conad stampers, in fact, I was going to get out, like, one of my old Conad stampers and just show anybody that has not had that experience what the the original i don't know if they actually are the original but they were they were my first stamping kit what the original stampers used to be like and uh used to have i mean they were small too i mean compared to this you know what do i have one i i am going to especially since we're just waiting for this to dry give me just one minute So, oops, oh man, this thing's super dirty. So this just been kicking around in a drawer for a couple years. So this is the Moyu Crystal Clear Stamper. Here is the uh, original Conad hard rubber. I mean, it, it's got a little bit of give to it, but it's it's not like these newfangled silicone stampers. And this trying to like show you guys now just imagine my nails are a little bit longer and imagine that the image plates do not fill up this entire stamper head the art of double stamping on your nail without even be able to see through the stamper that's what long nail people used to have to go through <laughs> ah memories not all good memories but it got i mean it's it's it got me here, so I guess it is kind of a good memory. Yeah, I have... I almost pulled out Coney. Um, I have the double-ended one, which has an end that's basically like this, and then the other end is about this big. It's like a little green end, and it's for, like... I mean, in theory, like placing a little butterfly just down in the corner, or for easier placement of smaller designs... Easier placement wasn't, back in the day, seeing through the stamper. It was having a smaller stamper, so you at least had less room for error. Yes, exactly clever. And we liked it! No, I didn't like it. I got pretty good at it, though. I, I even was going to do a YouTube tutorial on double stamping. And procrastinator that I am, never did it before, like all these new stampers came out and aside from the new stampers like the image plates that make it so that you don't even have to double stamp man liquid leather i don't remember used to having this much of a problem i mean you guys can probably see that's very sheer i know i have more than one bottle of this laying around and this is the one i happen to find and i'm not thrilled with it but we're gonna roll with it 
I just thought, I mean, I pulled it out because I'm going to be stamping with China Glaze, so I thought, let's also have a black China Glaze base, but, man, I have fond memories of liquid leather. Like I was talking about when I did the comparison swatches, I have fond memories of China Glaze just in general, and, uh... Not too fond of this right now. It's really kind of crappy. And I know I just said I was going to do my left hand first and then my right hand, but I've changed my mind. We're just we're just going to do it, do them both, and cross our fingers and hope that it doesn't suck. Liquid lace. <laughs> yeah, it's almost. I mean, like right now, it's almost like almost a jelly black. I don't know. I know I do have one bottle that uh was like really old and had been thinned out quite a bit, but usually polish thinner does not and it's inconsistent too. Like look how dark this middle finger is compared to the ring finger. Oh well. Oh well you guys. We're gonna make it work. Tim Gunn would be so proud. <laughs> sometimes when you're uh like sometimes once I get started I feel kind of like up oh, no turning back now even though that's obviously not true at all I mean I have another black sitting right here on my desk I could easily switch to that but will I no because I'm stubborn and hard-headed and I'm also kind of curious if I can get this opaque in two coats I probably think I can. Might take some creative brush stroke work, such as such as you see right here. Just kind of glomming it on there till it's opaque. But it does get opaque in two coats. I would like to get. I know a lot of people really seem to like. Uh, the black and white from uh Cirque colors but it's like one of those brands that I don't have anything from and I just know I mean I there's no way in the world I mean is it possible yes is it realistic no for me to go on their site and only buy the black and the white of course not and they're not cheap polish either. So it's like, if I were to make that move, it wouldn't just be an investment in the black and white. It would probably be a, you know, a decent sized haul. Glom is such an underrated word. I agree. I love glom. Glom and uh, lately curdled. I have lots of words that I love. Absurd. Absurd is one of my favorite words. And, of course, the ever-popular fuck. Because name me a word that is more multi-purpose. Alright, that doesn't look too bad. I mean, if I were to squint and stare, I probably could find a couple transparent areas, but... This is this is doable. This is work withable. Especially since once it's stamped, you are hopefully going to be distracted by the awesome beauty of uh hollow. Onomatopoeic. <laughs> I love that word also, even though I'm not completely like if I had to define onomatopoeia. I don't think I could. Um, it's one of those words that's also kind of hard to say, but kind of fun to say. Painted Polish also has a good one coat black. You know who else is a, is a pretty good one coat black? And I also could have pulled out if I, if I still have a bottle, which I should. Because there's no reason not to, because it's readily available. Is uh, 
wet and wild sometimes um kind of like with china glaze i've had bottles that were really good and i've had bottles that were a little bit more disappointing but um wet and wilds black is so opaque that i have at times actually used it for stamping so maybe i should just either find my existing bottle or freaking pick up one when i go to walgreens get me a good one coat black but also because there's always a but um with the peel off base coat sometimes i actually like doing two coats of a color instead of just one coat because um if you have just one coat or you have like really thin wimpy coats that can make it a lot harder to peel if you have you know more coats or thicker coats it seems to a lot of the time peel nicer so other reasons why i don't really mind all right one more here hi stephanie thank you for joining us words that sound like what they mean yeah yes yes curdled does sound curdled or like uh when you see people draw things and the words are like what do i want to say like almost animated words not like animated moving but like animated like curdled would be like that if that makes any sense to anyone but me i think it does i think that's why you guys like to hang out with me is because somehow you understand all my rambling and all the stuff that I say that I wonder if it makes sense. Somehow it does make sense to you guys. Oh, your current China Glaze Manny's all chipped. Sounds like you need a manicure night. So, I mean, China Glaze dries pretty fast. But I think I'm going to give it a coat of sesh feet. And, uh, just to hopefully avoid any problems. And I say hopefully because, I mean, I've certainly had times where, um, I've gone this route and wanted Seshvit to be more of a miracle worker than it actually is. I mean, even Seshvit has its limits. But the worst thing that probably will happen is, like, some wrinkling. We'll see. Hopefully we can avoid any of that. Hopefully we can avoid any problems at all. But, possibly, we'll get wrinkles. And if we do get wrinkles, hopefully... The final coat of Seshvit will resolve them. Stephanie, I mean, I don't want to, like, encourage you to be bad if it's really like, oh my god, nail polish or groceries. But if it's just like, you know, you're debating on whether or not you should get it, go ahead and treat yourself. I, I have given you permission. <laughs> It's a, I, I think it's a great collection. It's not, um, it, it's not like the hollows that are really popular right now. It's not bam in your face hollow, um, except in the sun, which, you know, I still, I've not edited the, uh, polish in motion that I recorded for these. But maybe I could give you guys a sneak peek of that while we're waiting for Sesh to do its magic here. You know, that's also underrated, Coney, is just like a little touch-up. Or, I mean, depending on how much time you have, a little... I don't know if I want to call it a hack or a cheat, because those like, seem like trendy words. Like, oh, it's a nail hack. But, um, 
Like take a sponge in another color and just sponge different color at the tips and then add top coat and then you've completely switched up the manicure and fixed your chip tips and nobody will be the wiser. My mom does that sometimes after I taught her how to sponge. You can see the tiny space between the layers and it drives you mad. I'm gonna... I'm gonna clean up just a little bit of this black right here. I probably should have done this before I top coated. But, um, I didn't. And I'm just considering... I just... I, I realized I kind of got quiet, which is not good when I'm streaming, but... I, it just dawned on me that I should consider whether or not I want to uh, use some latex. Because if you were here last weekend, you know the situation of my Simply Peel right now. Which is uh, not a grand situation. <laughs> it is in fact a curdled situation. And curdled latex, while it still does the job, is no fun. I think I'm probably going to skip it. That would also be, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, waiting for your base color to dry, another time when, in the normal course of things, your base color could be drying while your latex is drying. But we're going to, we're going to be rebels. Just like in the Conan days. We didn't have any latex back then. I don't know when the first nail artist picked up some latex from party city and said let me let me give this a whirl or when exactly simply peel was founded but when i was a child we didn't have any latex when we were stamping <clears throat> Not so simply peeled. It's still peeled. It just it was like not so simple of a uh not so simple application. Now let's see here. Let me open up um on my extremely crowded desktop. Are you opening here? I asked you to please open. Yeah. Well, and the other thing too, Prismatic Sky, is uh, what you're stamping with. Like, if I was stamping with black, I might give it some more consideration. Especially, like, an actual black stamping polish. Because black can be much more of a hassle to clean up. Caters, hello! Thank you for joining us. Okay, let's, uh, let's move this over here where I can see it. So is that... When did I do the China Glaze? Last week? On the 4th. Of course on the 4th. Um, 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 um. I haven't looked through these at all. So I'm actually gonna... Let's just mute this. Because you guys probably don't really need to hear... And then let's... Okay, wait a minute. Uh, let's window capture. Bear with me. Window capture. Um, hold on. Window capture. This? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, you're much too large. Don't be that large. Oh, we don't need all this stuff either. Hold on here. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Um, okay. That's good enough. So, this is the, uh... So, let's see. This is my left hand. So, this is the originals in the sun um from last week and you can see i mean the rainbow pops very strongly in the sun it's a lot different than they look indoors even with all the uh 
all the lighting shenanigans that I tried to uh, <laughs> to get the hollow to show up. I mean, there's nothing like seeing them in the sun. <laughs> and um, let me oh, where okay. This is the the new the new ones, the flashbacks in the sun. And trying to do this polish in motion, flexi motion with my right hand, you guys. I mean it's I'm I'm right handed. This should not be that hard, but for some reason it I absolutely is. It's so much harder than doing it with my left hand. But you can see the new ones are equally, if not slightly more hollow what is oh you're still open oh go away so those are the two collections in motion in the sun um yeah they're very shiny sacrista they're not i mean they're, they're not like the mirror chrome because especially in the sun you get so much hollow that you lose them like any kind of mirror finish but they are really really shiny Hi, Vinay. Yeah, I, I think I do music out almost like it's like you're seeing a reflection of it almost slightly above the nail other than like some of the new ones seems like it's more in the polish, I think. So. So here's a question for you guys. Should I do all the same color or should I just make this another test run and do one nail of each color and one hand of old ones and one hand of the new ones do you guys want to see how they all like literally all stamp well not literally all because I still have not picked up tonight unfortunately I'm going to I for sure I'm going to Let's see. All sounds fun. Why not? All right. All right. Let's get uh, slightly organized here. So these are our old ones. And I'm trying to be mindful here. Like I said, my nails are drying. They are probably not fully dry. Let's... uh. So this kind of I mean these colors don't quite lend themselves to uh like a rainbow order necessarily but I'm trying to put them at least so that they're um kind of complementary so I think I'll do the same order as I used last week and uh try to make some room here all right and yes, the chair, the cat chair, just turns into the nail polish detrius chair when Beanie's not here. And when I tell you that cat is, is, it thinks he's a person and is so smart, when he decides not to come in here when I'm streaming, I swear to God, he shows up as soon as I stop. Okay. So... Let's also try to put these so there. Okay, let's put this over here. I'm just trying to figure out where I can put these so I can still have some elbow room. Okay, this should be fine. So, left hand we'll do as originals again, and right hand we'll do as uh, the flashbacks like last time. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier for me to keep track of. We've also got our little lint roller. In fact, this is pretty dirty. I should peel that off. And even before I get started, like, I mean, I keep this in the case, but it maybe is a little bit hard to tell. It gets lint and stuff on it. It's, it, because it's made of silicone, it's actually kind of sticky. So it picks up every little 
lint, every little cat hair. You just have to really be mindful of it. I've got... I think I said the other day I was maybe going to show you guys these. This is my little glass... It's like a toothpick jar. And I just keep it st stacked full of uh, Q-tips. I especially prefer Q-tips when I'm uh, doing stamping. Because... You need to clean off your plate in between, or at least I prefer to. And if you don't have a Q-tip, you need to have a little grabby thing and uh, cotton, which I also have, but I just prefer the Q-tips. And this is my other little... Is is the prettiness of this glass coming across? It kind of is. This is my other little thing of things. It's got, you know, cuticle scissors, tweezers... I keep the uh, little lint roller in there because obviously you don't want to set that on the table or it's just going to roll around and pick up every little bit of lint that's on the table. <clears throat> I agree, Sacrista. Absolutely. Although sometimes Beanie is, is quite camera ready. So, um, I've never used this one before, I'm pretty sure. Hey, wait a minute. Where? Oh, okay. I was going to say, where the hell did my... Uh my scraper go. I don't think I've ever used this image before, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a quick swipe to get started. And I'm going to clean off some of the excess polish from my from my scraper here. And you can probably tell that my scraper is dirty all over the place. Because some stamps seem to respond better to certain edges of the scraper. I don't question it, I just accept it. We're going to start off going for this edge that I just cleaned off. And I usually will, you know, kind of make a mental note, like right now, the the side where MoYu is legible is up as opposed to the reverse side, and make sure, I mean, I'm assuming this is going to work, that this is the way that I'm going to be scraping the design. Um, I'm going to start out going this way. It may end up better working this way. We'll have to see. If I could create my own image plate. Oh, man. I don't know. Most people would probably expect me to just say water marble. But I don't feel like water marble image plates really... I mean, some of them have some pretty cool designs. But I don't feel like it really captures a water marble because a water marble, even if you do every nail the same, every nail is still a little bit different. And with the image plate, if you do every every nail the same, it really is the same. Mom of Noah, hello, thank you for the follow. Um, so I mean, I think they do have their place, especially for people that don't want to mess with regular water marble. But I think if I were really gonna make a plate, I would make one with just like a bunch of different like swirly curly cue patterns because I feel like I'm forever wanting a swirly curly cue pattern and I have a bunch but none are quite what I'm looking for. Mm. Yeah and you can do the marble on your own without a plate. I mean in theory sure you could do all this on your own without a plate. Most people not so much though. I mean some of these are really intricate. Like, the one that I'm going to be using is actually fairly simple. But if you look at, like, this one here, a lot of the lines are really fine and delicate. Or, you know, something like this. And and this is just, like, a small... You know, I showed you guys, what, six or eight different plates? That's such a small selection of my uh, image plate collection, you guys. <clears throat> Well, the other thing with the water marble plates is, Steph, is that, um, like, either it's a design that was drawn to look like a water marble, or it's a water marble that was altered to be more suitable for stamping. Um, when I was looking at the Born Pretty plate, where they stole one of my water marble designs, you could easily see where they had decided it was kind of too busy for a stamping design and they had removed some lines. But because of the way water marbles organically develop, while you might not be able to look and see and say, 
hey, they took out a line there. I feel like your brain recognizes that's not what the natural pattern would look like. So, yeah, and you don't get the same, like when you draw through with a water marble with your orange stick and the lines come together, it, it's different. I, I have yet to see a, a water marble image plate that actually looks like a water marble. There are some gorgeous swirly designs out there, but I don't feel like they look like a water marble. So, um, a few notes on stamping. Most of the time you don't have to cover up the whole plate with polish. You can line an edge or whatever and scrape and it'll cover the whole thing. But in some cases when you do that, like as you're scraping over, you're obviously going in one direction. You're pulling the polish in one direction. The most common thing that I end up seeing is like as you, as you pull it in this direction, some of the little cavities on the other side of the design, you might end up with little small bald patches. So if I get a design where that's a problem, I'll actually try to apply the polish in the opposite direction of what I'm scraping so that I brush the polish into that nook where the scraper is going to try to scrape it away, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, clever username. Um, I, I did a post about it on Instagram. I literally put them side by side and I was like, you know, this is some, this is some bullshit. And I called them on it. I reached out to them. They were, you know, pretty much full of shit. Didn't want to admit to it. Didn't want to credit me. Didn't want to compensate me. And caters. Thank you so much for the subscription. Oh, I'm sorry, subscriptions like <laughs> subscriptions make me a little bit goofy. Um but yeah, they they basically, you know, didn't want to admit to anything and since I can't afford an intellectual property lawyer to sue a company in China, there's not much I can do about it other than I personally will never in the world ever buy anything from them. So <sighs> Oh, thank you so much. That is really, I mean, I, I, I feel like thank you is not enough, but what do you, what else do, you, do I say other than thank you? So just thank you like 80 million times, haters. And now you have an adorable bean emote for your use. Yeah, clever. I, I mean, I definitely appreciate anybody that, um, you know, wants to give me that solidarity, solidarity and also boycott them. I know for a lot of people, they're a very, um, affordable nail art option because a lot of places seem almost like a ripoff as far as what they're charging for stuff. But, um, there, there are other cheap options out there. Other, and I know the other thing is I know I am not the only nail artist that I have that has found their, images stolen on born pretty pay plates like when i started looking into it i saw a lot of other people um saying the same thing mute goodbye phone sorry you guys i should remember to stick it in phone jail before i get started oh thank you prismatic sky yeah, it's, um, to me, it's just like, how did you think you'd get away from with this? But on the other hand, it was like, you've apparently been getting away with this for years by the time I actually noticed. Um, I don't even remember how I actually saw the plate if I was considering buying some more stamping plates and it came up, but I'm looking at this water marble plate and I'm like, that looks really, really familiar. And most, I mean, most water marble designs are not, um, necessarily completely unique. I mean, the basic, like, flower pattern where you just pull everything in toward the center or pointed petals, but they had picked one of my, um, random designs that wasn't actually completely random. It looked like they had just lifted the design right directly from my YouTube thumbnail. So... Oh, you guys, I, I so appreciate all your support. 
Because, yeah, to me, it's just like if you had reached out to me and said, hey, could we use this design and we'll we'll credit you, you know. I, I don't know if I even would have necessarily asked for any financial compensation or anything like that. Just to get your name out there as far as advertising is certainly a, a form of compensation. But for them to do it with no with no communication and then basically just to just to lie and and you know then stop responding to any of my emails it's another thing i'm do if i ever get rich i'm gonna sue the fuck out of them so (laughs) i just i i can only hope you know that it'll come back to them i i try not to be superstitious but i believe in karma and um you know, I'm gonna keep doing my thing, and if if that's their thing, if if stealing shit is your thing, you're gonna get your comeuppance eventually. You know what I mean? I I believe that. So, en- enough of that. We're gonna move on to actual nail stamping. The good thing is, all of that slight little ranting should have allowed our base color to be completely dry here. So, for the first stamp, I'm gonna try. Just like whoa, that's a that's a lot of words. Custom content for Sims. They so you were giving your stuff without ads, and they went and stuck it with ads. So they're basically like something you wanted to give for free. They're now charging money for. No, that's fine. Clever. That's, that's, that's so shitty. And I think, I think more people, I mean, it happens to more people that can't do anything about it than I think a lot of people realize. Um, if, if you want to look into it, if you're on Instagram, there's a a Instagram page. It's called Stop IP Theft and it's run by, uh, Vlada MUA, I believe her name is who had one of her has had many of her designs stolen by like really high-end makeup companies some of whom you know even like reached out to her for collaboration and then when she said no turned around and stole her shit which is like a whole like not asking in the first place is one thing asking being told no and then still doing it i feel like is taking it to even a new level of assholery um yeah so i uh they they have a hashtag and they do periodic posts and sometimes just putting a company on blast in public media and social media can be enough to maybe not get them to stop, but at least get them to stop with that one particular thing. Um, you know, and if, if nothing else, you know, just spreading the word so that people are aware And I mean, some people honestly don't know and think, you know, oh, it's fine. I found it on the internet. It's free. Like, that's not how intellectual property works, people. Um, you know, it's easy to steal and it's hard to protect, but people with common sense know what's right. So, (sighs) oh, yeah. Yeah, it's sucky, but not much we can do about it. Exactly. I mean... Especially with these companies that aren't even in the U.S. And, you know, it's like your your time and your stress is also worth something. And it's like, you know, with that thing, I, I felt like I kind of, you know, I called them out. I made a fuss. I, I made my stance. And I, I've done what I could for the moment. And if I can ever do more, I will. But at some point, you have to kind of just <sighs> let it go. And, uh, you know, like I said, just, just count on those people one day getting their comeuppance. That's Wiener. I like that one. Instead of BS. Yeah. Okay. Stamping. Stamping. what this stream is supposed to be about here um we're, we're making pretty good progress though i don't feel like we got too too sidetracked no problem i mean i know 
in the rules, I say, like, you know, don't come here to bring other people down and, like, it's a happy place. And I am trying to make it a happy place, but I also don't want it to be like, you know, never speak a word of negativity. And sometimes ranting is therapeutic and you get through the rant and you do just feel better just for for having people to understand you or, like, you know... All you guys that now said that you, you're you also going to boycott Born Pretty with me, um, I appreciate that. And, you know, ranting is okay, as long as it's not an everyday thing. Because, like, for me, and, and it's going to be different for everybody, but for me, like, if I dwell on what's making me unhappy or what's making me pissed off, of course, you're going to be unhappy, you're going to be pissed off. If you concentrate on the on the positives, on the support, on the on the people that support me even with subscriptions and the people that support me with being here to chat and the positive things like freaking shiny nail polish, you know, for me my mood is gonna be much better than if I just sat around talking about, man, five years ago Born Pretty stole this design for me and it's fucked up. So yeah. That that yeah. I mean, I, I think you guys probably agree with that. Or you wouldn't be here listening to me ranting and creating alternatively. <laughs> or alternately, not alternatively. Okay. Starting off, original, deviate, and uh, like I said, each each design is going to be a little different. Um just depending on how the lines are laid out, depending on how thick or thin some of the lines are. Um, so we're just going to start with painting off the one side, scraping across, and then picking up with a rolling motion. That's a really nice transfer. And I missed a little bit of the corner, but since this is for my pinky, I think that's okay. And we're gonna, you guys see in there? There you go. Like, just make sure to, like, some people seem to just like to press, like, right down. I like a little bit of a rocking motion when I stamp. I feel like it helps me get, um, all the way to the sides of my nail. And, um, m more than it would just like mashing it down on there and we do have a little bit left on the stamper we're just going to boop like that and then we're ready for the next one yeah i like that and i was thinking i would clean up at the at the end once i'd finished stamping but you can kind of see how these um i want to say they're like floating in the wind even though there's no wind in here but they're just like kind of sticking around so just to prevent them from like bending back and going on top of the nail I'm just with a q-tip gonna get some of the worst bits that are flying around hi Mrs. Shredo <laughs> lurking and listening to the rant yeah it does and like right now even in person we've already discussed how the ring light washes out hollows but even in person, this doesn't have a lot of hollow yet. But once we top coat it, more of that will pop out. And even without the hollow, I think it shows it better here. Even though it's not in focus. We've, we've talked about this many times too. But you can see, I mean, is it as vibrant as the color just by itself? Obviously not. But it's quite vibrant enough to stamp with. And I already need more acetone in my little cup. I've got that just sitting, like, here's here's the uh, stamping. Here's my my little cup. And just with the Q-tip, just get in there, and I'll usually go, you know, side to side, and then side to side the other way. And, yeah, I mean, I picked a pretty good stamp because, like I said, there can be weirdness with stamping, and each one can be a little bit different. This is the originals. And I was going to... I was debating mentally if I want to do all one hand and then all the others but I think I want to do kind of like I did last time and do each each color so now we've got the new deviate and like I said I'm picking this up with a slight oh 
Okay. This is not, not a good pickup. Now, why did we not get a good pickup? Shit, are you about to disappoint me, flashback colors? So, I just stamped it off onto the uh, lint roller. And you can see, I think so, I think I need more polish for one thing. So let's clean this up. And another thing, I mean, acetone evaporates pretty quickly, but make sure it's dry before you move on to... Uh, before you move... You know, actually, let's actually even get... Because sometimes, like in the past, sometimes it's like, as I go on, stamping is getting progressively and progressively harder. And I don't usually feel like the acetone leaves a residue, but you can see, like on the side here, obviously it does leave a residue. So let's try with a dry Q-tip to just clean out some of that residue. And let's give this another try. These are still... Yeah. I'm going to use more polish. And then... We'll see. No, still. What is the deal here? Ha ha ha. Ha ha, what did I say before you guys? I'm setting myself up for disappointment. I guess I was right. Not not full disappointment though. This is uh this is work withable, but it just goes to show that as similar as they are, something in there is different. Something in that new formula is different from something in that old formula. And, uh, like, a part of me is super curious. Like, what is it that is making it react so very differently? So, okay, so since we're having that problem... Where it almost seems, I mean, those are almost like, see, this is kind of good too, because I can like use it as instructional reference where I've stamped off the mistakes. Like, like I said, like you get bald patches, but these are like huge, gigantic bald patches. Usually, it, usually bald patches and stamping look to me almost like bubbles doing water marbling, like just little tiny, small imperfections. So... We're going to take this and we're going to stroke it on in the opposite direction that we're going to be scraping to start. Then we're going to scrape, stamp, horrible again. Shit, you guys. I'm, n I'm not giving up yet, though. I'm not giving up. I still have a couple things I want to try. It's like the big center area is giving it the most trouble. Yeah, I'm going to try that in a second. The first thing, I, I think part of it is, so like when you when you scrape across, the, the way the whole system works with, with nail stamping is you, you have a flat scraper. The scraper trails across the raised part the polish remains in the open part. The bigger spots can be a problem with that sometimes. So let's try scraping the other direction. Ah, this is not perfect, but look how much better that is. I was still picking up with the rolling motion. Literally the only change I made was scraping this direction instead of scraping that direction. Hi, Barbie. So let's uh clean this off right here. Oops, wrinkled up a little bit. But you guys can see that's a lot better than these kind of half-assed ones. We're, we're making progress. This is so interesting. I mean, it's frustrating too, but it's also interesting. And this is what I was talking about. Like, even, even designs you've used before, if you're using a different polish, you might need to switch up your technique a little bit to get the same quality of a stamp. Okay, so... I do think it was beneficial to get rid of the acetone residue. 
I think let's also let's I'm gonna try with the other side of my stamper also. And that kinda I I think what that affects is uh like the pressure that you're putting. Like I said, the whole thing is to scrape across the surface and leave the polish in the engraved section. So let's see what we get here. We scrape like that. Nope, that was that was a crappy one again. All right, we're gonna go back to the first side and we're gonna try pressing flat down instead of rolling. And then, hopefully it'll give us a good one. Then we're gonna move on. I, I don't know about letting it dry once it gets, once you scrape, cause usually, maybe I'll try it, but usually what happens is then you don't pick up anything at all. It does get it a little bit more tacky, but it's more likely to make it more um, like it grips harder to the plate. <laughs> Picturing little nail polish like holding on to the uh, to the image plate. Oh, the kaleidoscope plate. Yeah, I've used it before. Not this particular image, Barbie, but I was saying that uh, this is the one that I used for the poinsettia design that I did for Christmas, and this one picked up so nicely. I mean, it was perfect. It was like first, first try. I didn't even have to do anything. <laughs> it just instantly worked. And sometimes what I just did there, you guys, was kind of off camera, but I just dipped the scraper right into my bowl of acetone. It's another reason it's nice to have a slightly larger bowl and uh, clean off, you know, this edge um, can get kind of gunky when you're stamping. Okay, so we're going to load this up. We're going to stamp, and we're going to go straight up and down. we got like a halfway. Which half is that? The top half. Let's, uh... It can take some practice, Mom of Noah. I, I feel kind of rusty because... I mean, there were several years where I just didn't stamp that much, even though stamping is really what got me into nail art to start out with. So, I want to try, well, let's, first we'll backload the polish, then we're going to scrape, then I'm going to roll, there we go. You guys see that? Instead of rolling from the center toward the edge, I rolled from the edge toward the center. Now let's... Oh, you son of a bitch! You guys, look at this! It's, it's clinging on here. <sighs> okay. Maybe I took too long showing you guys. G generally speaking, with stamping, you want to go as quick as you possibly can. Put the polish down, scrape, stamp, stamp it on your nail. Don't, don't delay, don't dawdle. So maybe I dawdled a bit too long there. Let's, uh, but I got a good pickup. That's, that's half the battle. If nothing else, if I can get a good pickup and the only issue is the transfer, we can uh we can grab the yellow stopper that's right over there right right over there um your face right now <laughs> i mean the apparently these are more different than i really thought they were cuz i mean i i certainly showed you guys the other one for at least that long 
At least we got we got another decent decent transfer, but I can't show you guys because I want to do this as quick as I can. Okay. There. There. So it took some doing, but we doed it. We do the thing. That was that was a lot. I'm gonna admit that was a lot of uh, messing around just to get this pinky stamped. But now that it is stamped, let's uh. So here is the original. Here is. This is really difficult too now that the napkin is a little dirtier. So, original flashback. I mean, obviously, just as far as uh, ease of process, the originals are superior. So far, I mean, we're, we're one color in. Um, now, the question is... Well, one of the questions is... How will the originals stamp in this direction? Am I really going to have to switch which direction I'm going each time I'm stamping or not? So, let's get this clean. Super clean. And, uh, stamper's clean. It's also good kind of to get a habit when you're, when you're stamping to make sure you're ready before you go. It's very frustrating to scrape and then be go to stamp it and then realize your stamper is not clean. So here we go with the original OMG, which looks, you know, really sheer on the plate. Picks up well. And there, this one, I feel like you already can start to see some of the hollow shifting as I move my finger around, even under the ring light. Um, so, with all of our previous testing and knowledge, let's see if we can get a... Uh... God, I didn't put very much acetone in there. I feel like I filled up my little thing with acetone like four times the stream already. Let's see if we can get new OMG to stamp equally well. Using all of our tricks learned from DV8. And crossing our fingers. Alright. Stamp. Stamp. Uh, I'm gonna redo this. This is a mostly... See, even there. That's nice. It's subtle, but you guys can even see the hollow just right there. Um, but you can also see that I've got uh, part of the design missing right there. So I'm going to redo it. But that was also, I mean, our, our learning paid off. And that's at least the good thing is that most of the time, once you figure out... The, the stamps themselves can be inconsistent, and your experience with different polishes can be inconsistent. But usually once you figure out what works... For the uh, like for the combination that you're currently using, you should be good to go. It's not like it usually, like knock on wood, shouldn't stop working halfway through. All right, let's try that one more time. All right, there we go. Nice clean. see I always forget to check if you guys can see in the in the camera because that's also one of the cool things about the uh whoa uh, the clear stampers is that most of them have the clear tube I'm just trying to get this not there can you guys even see this on camera this part that wants to bend back over on the top of my nail 
and I'm trying not to not to let it. And that can be a common problem when you're stamping, not even just uh, like with these hollows, is if the design starts to dry, then the little edges that don't make it onto your nail, they just like, they're reaching for something to grab onto. Like your skin is not tacky enough to, to hold them down. So they're reaching and you really have to be careful that they don't bend back on top of your nail and uh, mess up your design. Pretty good though. So here we have the original. Here we have the new one. And in this case, I think the new one might actually have stamped better. I'm, I'm fully reserving judgment though until top coat. So we'll, we'll see who the true winner is at the end of all this. And I do go through a crap load of Q-tips when I'm doing this. Just because, I mean, you don't want to be trying to clean your plate with a dirty Q-tip. And a few cleanings, and it's pretty dirty. Because it's surprising how much is actually left behind, um, even when you get a good transfer. I mean, or even like this one. I mean, this is like months ago. <laughs> and, uh... I really should clean that off. Maybe maybe I'll do it when I'm done today. Um, so yeah, that was both the OMGs. Now we're going to move on to IDK. I don't know. So sheer. Yeah. A gold stamping polish. You can see the design. I, I love stamping with gold. I actually have a, a favorite that I use that is not a stamping polish, but I've always loved the way it looks stamped. It's called... Misa Ghetto Fabulous. And uh, when I was shopping for these and the color club, I was seeing all these sites have Misa on clearance. So I'm actually thinking of picking up a spare of Ghetto Fabulous because I'm like, is this company going out of business or are all these colors just getting discontinued or whatever? Um, colors by LaRoe does have a, a lineup of stamping hollows. But one thing that I prefer the China Glaze OMG collections over those is the Colors by LaRoe ones are almost like the, not the grit, but the, the texture of the hollow is just a, a step bigger, a step grittier. These are really fine and smooth. And the, the Colors by LaRoe ones, if you get a design that has very fine lines, it's like the hollow's almost doesn't want to go in there whereas i feel like these are are so fine and so smooth that they really can get in all the small crevices and stamp just like uh just like a cream polish would yeah all the q-tips well if you don't like q-tips i mean the other option and like i always say it's your personal preference i like the q-tips because i always have a crap load because th they're useful for so many things in nail polish but so is this thing this little doohickey here. So on the end, it's got this on this end, a little plunger end. And what that does, it's got these, I'm sorry for the sound effects, you guys. I can't help myself. It's got this little cloth end. So like, I've still got my cotton from when I took off my polish. What you do is you get the cotton, an unused piece, obviously. You grab it with the little... With the little teeth and then you have this uh this thing which is safe to grab you're not getting acetone anywhere near your nails and a thing of cotton at the end and you ch -ch -ch, like that um i just always have kind of used q-tips and have stuck with them so that one i have is just from sally's was a couple bucks probably um I know Bliss Kiss also has one, and I'm sure, like, on Amazon, they're all over the place. So, yeah. I ca yeah. <laughs> As I'm catching up with chat. Yes, one of those things. Um. So, yeah, we're moving on to the purple. I decay. Make sure, yep, we're all clean here. Good to go. And I really, I kind of hope China Glaze does a part two and like re-releases the rest of the colors. Because the darker purple 
LOL. LOL was my jam. I mean, they all kind of were, but I really loved LOL. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Oh, I've got just a little bit. You guys might not even be able to see at this particular camera angle. A little bit here where it kind of folded back on itself. Guess what we're going to do to that? We're going to use that same trick we used for the uh, the bleeding reciprocal gradient. And we're just going to carefully, since we have top coat on, clean that off. That's what I've been trying to, trying to avoid um, happening. And then get these other little ones around the edge here. So they don't writhe up and cause trouble. And this is another one I think you can kind of already start to see the hollow of it. It's kind of funny too, you know, we were, uh, when we were playing Hollow Knight, we came across the nail smith. And I like, it completely like, whoo, like, hello, nail smith, like, no, not just your little skull dude's sword nail, like, hello, you do nails. And uh, had a good laugh about that. But along the same kind of, you know, words have different meanings and different spellings. When I first was telling my, my mom that I was going to be playing a game called Hollow Knight, she thought it was like holographic evening, not like, you know, empty dude with a sword. So that was kind of funny. Um, and I'm going to move on to the new I Decay. That was a lot of polish. That was probably a little bit too much polish. Which, I mean, is not technically... Okay, that... I, I don't like that. It's not a bad pickup, but I feel like... Uh... In fact, now that I look a little closer at the other two, both of them have this problem too. So if I hadn't just waited too long for it to probably get dry... Let's, uh... Let's see if I can actually... Alright, I've turned on autofocus here. Let's see if it'll focus as I get close here. Focus? Hello? Come on. No? Okay, I'm just gonna try and hold my hand here and manually... Alright, hold on. There. Can you guys see how nice and sharp all these flower petals are? Nice, sharp, pointed edges. Wow, and look at that hollow on the purple. Now, on these, look at the flowers in particular. Um, they're stamping, but some at some point the design is getting a little bit warped. The flower petals look rounded compared to these where the flower petals are sharp. I hadn't even actually looked that close to notice how different they were. Okay, now we need to go back and... Am I somehow still in focus down here too? Not quite. Let me just... Uh... Is that good? Is that somehow good at both heights? How did I not find this setting before? Wait, the true test, the other reason I like using the mat yeah, that's, let me just, there, there we go, that should be good focus, um, so yeah, so going, going by that, going by that design failure, I would say the originals now are back to winning, if they, if they ever were not winning. What did you miss, Coney? You missed the uh, the cotton ball grabber demonstration. But I can show you again if you would like. We were talking about uh, using up so many Q-tips. And I said that the other option is... And I use my little old cotton for an example. But they make these little things with this uh, claw grip that will let you grab cotton without getting polish remover all over your fingers. Oh, 
<laughs> Mom of Noah. Is is that Noah or is this a different baby? <laughs> well, they could have other like like yeah, or if that is the only kid and then you have more kids eventually and the kids will see your username and they'll be like, "Well, wait a minute. You're <laughs> you're my mom too." <laughs> Go check your mail, expecting a package. Is it nail mail, Vinay? I know you guys. I, I gotta say again, I know I'm not always like part of the conversation in Discord, but I do at least try to catch up when I when I do go in there. And uh I I love seeing all you guys' posts. Yes, they are the paper kind. They are uh like cardboard or like rolled up little paper so yeah they're not like those like i i can't even like comprehend i like i probably didn't even know those existed for quite a while because we never had that kind like in my household that have the actual plastic in the middle all right let's see if we can get a decent or as decent as these colors are capable of with the with the purple Oh, now we had another really bad pickup. Alright. Clean it off. Try again. These... these I, I guess the lesson here that we're learning kind of... It's kind of really disappointing me, honestly. Um, that the new ones are not as good as the old ones for stamping because, I mean, you could see why I love the old ones for stamping. They were, they were great. The invitation expired. Check that one. If if that one doesn't let work, Steph, let me know because uh, with Discord, the thing is like, servers are technically like closed, so that not just any old troll can come in your server. So a lot of times when you create an invite, it does only last for a certain amount of time so that it can't just be like uh, spread around and used and abused. But I think that that one. OK, I was going to say, I think the one that I linked, I selected that it should never expire. So hopefully it's still working. OK. OK, good. All right, let's try this one more time. Well, not one more time. We're going to make it work, but let's hope that this time is the time that it does work. All right. Decent. Decent-ish. Decent enough. Because the other thing is, I mean, I'm a little bit disappointed with these, but this manicure is only going to be on for two days. Because Saturday... Saturday is going to be birthday nails, you guys. And they are going to be like 50 times more holographic than these. I, I hope it goes smoothly doing it, uh, doing it live. But uh, the plan is, if you would like to know, I'm not like intentionally being like mysterious. The plan is to... Uh, do some more nail foil strips. The first version that I did in the turquoise, I really loved. And I thought that the next time I would be doing it, I would be doing it in black. But the, the post I originally saw that was my inspiration was actually in silver. And for a long time, I couldn't find my original set of nail foils, which had a flat silver hollow in it. But I found it. So I'm pretty strongly leaning toward doing silver. The black is still a contender. Maybe I will show you guys before I cut stream. I'm joining off your phone. I wonder, I wonder if it's maybe because you didn't already have the Discord app, but I'm not sure. Like I use Discord on my phone sometimes, but I think every every one that I've joined, I've joined from my computer. So I don't know. And I've joined probably after I had the app. So I don't know if it, if it makes a difference. 
Oh, we gotta go make a bottle. Alright, so we're going to stamp with BFF next. The pink. Uh, first is the old one. The old good one. The, the upside, of course, is now I know I have a quote-unquote uh, backup silver in later gator because later gator has changed from green to silver so i don't have to worry about using up my original my original omg i can just stamp with later gator and i need more okay or a decent amount of acetone in here colette actually do i have another this is I mean, most 100% acetone should be created equal. Is this showing up? This is just like the kind you get at Target. And probably kind of hard to see on stream, but it's down to here. I just started buying the gigantic bottles because, I mean, it's not like I'm not going to use it. I'm always going to be using polish remover. And, uh, whoa. There we go. And so, I mean, the little ones are kind of easier to manage. And for a while, I had kept my slightly smaller one and I was just refilling it from the large one. But, um, yeah, then I got lazy and just started working directly from the large one. You joined on your phone, musical. Okay. By the I probably should buy it by the gallon. It's probably a better deal. I, I surprisingly don't go to Sally's as much as I used to. I feel like uh, a lot of times they piss me off. It's like I come for something in particular and then like they don't freaking have it. That was a really good one. Can't show you guys too much because I want to go before it dries. But um, So it seems like I either end up ordering it online from somewhere or even just ordering it online from Sally's but actually going in the store I don't very often anymore but Target I mean I'm at Target often not as often as I used to be because like obviously when I had an office job you gotta get home at the end of the day and it's usually pretty easy to convince yourself oh let me just stop here and grab such and such and then you walk out of Target $70 later <laughs> Like, now that I work from home, like, convincing myself to go out, it's much easier to convince myself to stay in. This one, this is the old one, this is the new one. The new one is definitely pinker, but again, you can definitely see that the old one is definitely a cleaner design. And uh, we've just got one more... I, I wouldn't say they never have anything good, but the other thing that I think I got distracted and didn't finish my thought is that I feel like when I very first got my Beauty Club card, it got you some deep discounts. Like, you, you were really getting a deal. And I definitely still recommend, like, if you shop there, get the card. Because number one, you usually, I mean, it seems like they change things every now and then, but usually when you buy the card for $5, you get a $5 coupon to use the following month. It's basically free. And some things do have more of a discount than others. Um, but like a lot of times, stuff like, uh, you know, like Sesh Vite, I feel like you used to get like almost a 40% discount on Sesh Vite with the beauty club card versus the regular price. And now it's, you know, you're still getting a discount, but it's just not as good. And even, even like the professional, uh, card, I don't know what that's actually called, but my dad is a barber. So he has one, they get a slightly deeper discount than just the regular Sally's card. But even that doesn't seem to be as much as it used to be. So Sally's just getting greedy. And guess what it's getting them? It's losing them business. I know I'm not the only one. So what is the lesson here, boys and girls? Well, I don't know how many boys we have in here today. <laughs> Usually we have quite a few. But the lesson is, don't be greedy. Like, I don't know. Seems basic to me. I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to act like I'm never selfish, but I try not to be greedy, if that makes sense. All right. 
Stamping with these is so nice, it makes me want to stamp again. And you can hopefully see, let me get a good angle here, even these Moyu London plates, it's a good thing that I cut my nails because this thumb design is just barely, just barely wide and tall enough for my thumb. And something like this, I mean, with Conan double stamping, you just are never going to get this because you... I mean, this is a, 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 a an intended full nail design centered on the nail. Double stamping isn't going to get you these results. It's just not. So uh, let's clean up just a bit around the edges here. And I'll go in, too, with my normal cleanup brush and really get by the cuticle and stuff before I top coat. Like I said, I just don't want those little little tendrils of dry polish getting anywhere they're not they're not wanted um the other thing is i do there there are s some hair things that i purchased there that they don't have anywhere else like uh target has shower caps but all the shower caps they have at target are for like people with tiny heads or children so i get like I don't know, I, I want to call it like the old lady bonnet shower cap at Sally's, but I mean, it needs to be big enough not just to fit my big old head, but to fit like when I got rollers in, or to fit when my hair is huge, and I mean, the huger it is, and when I want to keep that volume, the less I want to get it wet at all. Sometimes when my hair is like at its biggest, I have this extra ginormous sleeping cap, that is not completely waterproof, but I end up having to use because my hair is actually too big, even for my extra large shower cap. So, yeah, big hair problems. All right, our last one here. Oops, I should have been back painting that, but it's okay. We'll see if it works. Not bad. Not bad. And there we go. Yeah. I'm I'm just still kind of surprised at how wonky, which is another underused awesome word, these uh these transfers are. Like I I feel like I've rarely run into that problem. Usually the problem is Either it's not transferring properly, or you have a lot, a lot of bald patches, or those type of things. To have this problem where the design itself is not, um, not completely, uh, straight is, is kind of weird. And on this one, this is the original. This is the new one. The original is actually a much stronger color. Generally speaking, original new the uh yeah and i do have those in the right order original new <laughs> this is getting like progressively harder original new <laughs> to get to get the fingers together and to keep on camera original new most of the other ones the new one is a stronger color but for this one the original is definitely a lot stronger yeah I I I think yellow stopper may have helped a little bit with those tendrils that I was getting, but once I noticed it and I was being kind of more um aware of it, I could see that it was already uh distorted on the stamper before I stamped it on my nail. And I'm not going to say that it's an impossible problem to overcome. I mean, you guys saw how just those few changes that I made, I mean, the blue was probably the hardest to stamp with. And I kind of stuck with that technique through the rest of the nails. The thing is, um, like that technique might not even have been necessary for the other colors. But that technique worked for the other colors, so why mess around and see if the other techniques were, were bad, if that makes sense? Like, once you find a good one, you don't need to mess around and check and see if there are bad ones. Maybe out of, you know, six different ways to scrape and three different ways to to uh, stamp, you know, maybe half are good and half are bad. Maybe they're all good or maybe they're all bad. All you have to do is find one 
good way that works for you and your set. Um, but there definitely might be a way to address that. And maybe on a day when I'm feeling a little bit more uh, experimental, maybe we can can do some of that because I would I would love to figure out how to make these stamp better. Um, another thing that I don't I don't think I might even have mentioned is uh, what stamper you're using. Like all stampers are not not created the same. I mean, we talked about how, how bad the old Conan stamper was in kind of a joking, reminiscing way. But even of the new stampers, um, even like between my two clear stampers, between my, my Mo You London stamper and my Born Pretty stamper, they're slightly different. They're slightly different sizes. They're slightly different uh, smooshiness. Um, I also have the the rectangular opaque moyu stamper um and even like if you go on the moyu website or on amazon they have multiple different kinds of different stampers like they'll be listed as oh this is the marshmallow stamper or this is the sticky stamper so maybe i need a stamper that's a little softer or maybe i need a stamper that's a little harder or maybe i need a stamper that's a little more sticky like there's there's so many factors and some of those you you are in control of some of those you can make the change yourself like if you want your stamper to be a little firmer as far as of the ones that i have um like this one it's pretty flexible it also has a cap for this end if you put the cap on here and like trap the air it makes it makes the stamper a little firmer. And when you take it off and then the air is not trapped, then that makes it a little um a little softer. And it's the same thing with my with my Bliss Kiss stamper, which I actually at first I was like, I know the end of this can come off, and I could not get it off for the longest time. And then somebody and I always feel a little bit bad when I can't remember who it was that gives me a really helpful tip. They just recommended um, take out the stamping head and press from the inside and that way I was finally able to get the the end cap to pop off so and I mean also usually because most of the time e either with the rocking motion or even with pressing uh, like flat down when you pick up the design usually for the plates the uh the curved side is the side you want to use but you can use the flat side i have not experimented a lot with actually stamping with the flat side but i did use the flat side the one time that i did a stamped water marble i don't know if i would do it again i might use the round side just to see how it worked but the reason i didn't the reason i may not again is because um once once the marble dries a little bit, which is kind of important to get it to transfer properly, um, on the dome side, it would be dried concave the opposite direction as you want it to apply on your nails, and then you would have more problems with those little overhanging uh, stringers. And I'm ignoring tracks, chat. Oh no, lag? I'm green. I did drop some frames. I'm not sure when. Um always twitch back okay froze lag not for you reloading thought it was just me we're back reload back to normal okay if anybody's still having problems give a reload a try um that's interesting miss shredo i've never i've i've tried really hard never to let acetone touch this one that's what i have my little uh my little lint roller for. I don't think I even cleaned it when I first got it, but that's because it was like I had read all these like horror stories online. I've had a couple instances where it has gotten a little cloudy after smooshy marbling, like after having like a heavy amount of polish on it, like a lot heavier than you ever would have for, for normal stamping. Um, but it's good to know that they're not like 
completely vulnerable to acetone. Okay, we're going to add a top coat with a neutral detergent. Always makes them pick up better. That's also an excellent tip. I mean, I'm trying to remember if I had problems with this one when I very first got it. I kind of don't think I do, but I may just be misremembering. We're kind of, let's just, well, we've got a dirty napkin. It's, it's not a huge issue. Acetone destroyed my stamper, not clickbait. <laughs> I mean, back in the Conad days, where'd it go? We didn't worry about acetone with this sucker. We'd drop the whole thing in the cleanup thing and just swish it around and clean the whole thing up. I mean, it's, it's freaking indestructible. I don't know if I showed a good angle of really showing how little flex it has to it, but I mean, it's, it's pretty hard. In fact, for a while, before I had my nice new clear ones, but when I was starting to get kind of fed up with the Conad ones, um, the, uh, what, what is that kit, that stamping kit, that cheap ass stamping kit that kind of sucks? I, I can't think of the name of it, but I actually liked the uh, the stamper that came with it because it was softer than the Conan stamper. Mm. Huh, that's really interesting, Ms. Shredo. Yeah, I just, it was one of those things where it was like, it seemed like everybody was in pretty, whoops, sorry guys pretty strong agreement that it was it was bad so i never really questioned it or experimented too much just making sure i'm fully clean here before i move on to the top coat um so i never really questioned it like i i enjoy experimenting sometimes if i'm in the mood for experimentation but at the same time it's like if other people have already uh put in the time and effort to figure something out i'm like well cool that saves me time. It's this little spot where I cleaned up a little bit. I just see it's a little bit rough. Top coat should fix it. No, it's not the P Salon Express. That's what it's called. And I don't know if it's still available in stores. And it, it was... I, I've still got the plates. The plates are meh. They're, they're not the greatest plates. It's not the greatest scraper. It, it's not the greatest stamper compared to like a really nice stamper like this, but I did kind of like the stamper compared to my Conan stamper. The other thing with the plates were, uh, they seem to be very inconsistent. Like you might get a decent pair of plates or you might get a pair of plates, well, more than a pair. I think it came with like five, but you might get plates that are etched, etched so shallowly that you cannot even get a design to, to pick up at all. The Pueen stamping kit, I think I actually was like on the lookout for that and I never did find it. Alright, top coat. And then maybe I will uh maybe we'll play with the lights a little bit again and see if we can get a good look at this finished manicure. Wow, they're almost disappearing on camera with the top coat. That's weird. They're not gone. I promise you guys. And I'm pleased that I managed to... I mean, for the most part... I mean, we got we got sidetracked a couple times. It's hard not to with uh, with chat and everything going on. But for the most part, I feel like I stayed... Oh, there's a hair in there. I feel like I stayed on task for this manicure and uh, got it done in a pretty reasonable amount of time. Obviously, if you're doing this at home, you don't have a, a chat to distract you or a wandering attention span like I do. A stamped manicure can be done a lot faster or even not necessarily in one sitting. Like... Uh, because you do want your base to be really nice and dry, a lot of times I used to use it after uh, a day or two just to switch things up a little bit. Wash your hands really well, make sure your nails are really clean, stamp on an existing manicure, and uh, 
That's just fine also. Yeah, these these new ones, I, I wonder too, I don't think I finished this other thought that I was having as far as making them work properly with stamping. Uh, a design where the edges are maybe not quite so sharply defined. Like, if, if the flowers, ha I wonder if the flowers actually had been round petaled flowers, how it would have treated the design. If we still would have seen some warping, or, you know what I mean? If it was partly the design's fault that the polishes reacted that way. And sometimes, unless you literally go and, and do a whole bunch of testing, it's hard to, to know those things. That's why, I mean, even even though stamping is comparatively easy, compared to, like, uh, you know, water marbling, that doesn't mean that there's nothing that can go wrong and that there's no uh, learning curve. Every technique has a learning curve. Painting your nails a plain color has a learning curve. Oh no, and now I've got to itch, and my nails are much too dry, much too, much too wet to, to itch. Okay, let's... The other thing nail tools are good for... Itching yourself. <laughs> Ninja! Hello! God, Ninja shows up and chat just explodes with chickens. <laughs> We are, uh, we're just wrapping up here, Ninja. We did another comparison between the, the China Glaze original OMGs and the flashback OMGs. And this round was also very close, but we discovered that the originals keep the design, um, a lot sharper. Like, let's let's see if we can get another really good look here. Like at this purple one. See how nice though that flower is? Petals are nice and pointed. Everything's nice and symmetrical. Compared to this hand. <laughs> where the flower tips are looking kind of rounded. And not everything is quite so symmetrical. But I mean, from a little bit of a distance. I think this is fine. Let's get rid of this dirty. I'm sorry, that's really getting on my nerves having that in the corner. But I mean... Just at a glance, I don't think you're super going to be like, Oh my god, your stamping is janky. You know. I'll know. Because <laughs> I always know, but... Oh, work. Adulting. The good news is, Sunburned, that there are many more streams coming in the next few days. Um, I plan on streaming tomorrow. I plan on streaming Saturday, and I plan on streaming Sunday. Usually, uh, I'm sorry, I've still got this itch here, and now I'm trying to itch it on my chair. I don't know why. It's like the back of my arm, too. It's not an easy place to, to reach. Thank you, Legend of Grisma. Um, usually Friday is almost an absolute no for streaming, because almost every Friday I go to visit my grandma, and a lot of times when I get home, like, getting home at 8 o'clock is kind of early. Getting home at 9 or 10 o'clock is not uncommon. And, uh, you know, at that time of night, I'm really probably not going to start a stream. But tomorrow I am not going to Grandma's house, so probably around noon, that's kind of what I'm tentatively aiming for, we're going to have another Hollow Knight stream. And then, like I mentioned, uh... Saturday is my birthday. We're going to be doing a birthday manicure. Going to get things kicked off at 2 o'clock central, like usual. And then Sunday's Hollow Night stream will be at probably 6 o'clock or maybe a little bit earlier. We'll see. Sunday, it really depends like what, I, what else is going on exactly what time the stream starts. 6 o'clock has so far worked very well. Um, yeah, and, and we'll see how all that works out. <laughs> we are so, Grammy IRL stream. I don't know if Grandma would be down for that. Like, my my Grandma is loves seeing my nails done. She appreciates nail art. Um, she watches most of my tutorials, and she was interesting in the live streaming at first until my mom like explained what it was and that I'd probably be live for a couple hours. And then Grandma was like, Psh, "I ain't got time for that," because. <laughs> 
I mean, she's got her, she's got her own things to do. They need to go out to dinner and uh, read books and do puzzles and that type of thing. Like a seal on Hollow Knight. Yeah, this is my uh, Hollow Charm. The power it gives me is the power of awesome manicure. I should have come up with a better power. I always have that power, hopefully. Thank you, Sunburned. Tomorrow's game is uh, Hollow Knight. Um, I, I do plan on adding in some other games eventually, but I'm really loving Hollow Knight. I kind of credit Hollow Knight with getting me back into gaming after a really long hiatus. It's beautiful. The sound is gorgeous. It's difficult, but not so difficult that I'm like completely stuck, although I've been walled a few times. It's not half that you don't know the name. Um, you could call it a turban. You could call it a head wrap. You could call it a desperate last minute move so you guys don't have to look at my rollers. <laughs> but thank you, Ninja. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Hollow Knight is, it's a gorgeous little 2D Metroidvania style platformer. These are all, well, not all, but many words that I did not previously know. Uh, like Metroidvania. My mom is like, what is this game all about? I'm like, it's a Metroidvania mom. Like, enjoying my new vocabulary. And then she's like, what is that? I'm like, well, back in the olden days, there was this game called Metroid, and there was this game called Castlevania, and now there's this whole genre that they called Metroidvania. At least, I'm assuming that's where the, the name came from. I, it would be very odd if those two games, which are this style, are not the origination of that word that appears to be both of them combined. Hollow Knight Manicure. I, I know. I, I feel like the, uh, the reciprocal gradient did have a little bit of a Hollow Knight feel in the colors, but I definitely would like to, to do something more Hollow Knight themed. So, that's what's coming up in the next couple of days, you guys. Um, we are just about done here. Let me see. Symphony of the Night. Now, I don't even know which number Castlevania that is. I've never played a Metroid or a Castlevania. Um, yeah, it is too perfect. <laughs> um, oh, also, on the, on the subject of games, I'm going to put it further out there in the universe, which means I have to do it. The, the speedrunning community has an event that's called the 12-Hour Challenge, where they invite people who've never speedrun before to learn a game within that period and get at least one completed run done to submit to the leaderboards. And I am considering very strongly participating in that challenge. It's the 27th through the 29th of this month. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty strongly leaning toward that and leaning toward pulling my NES out of my closet seeing if it works, and uh, my choice will be one of the retro games that I already own if that works out. So if you're not interested in the Hollow Knight, maybe you are interested in retro retro style games. Uh, maybe you are interested in seeing me die in Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> I've, uh, I've actually never beat Super Mario Brothers, so if I can get the Nintendo out and running... Um, before I do the challenge, I will probably do, like, some kind of a, like, a run-through to see if I can even beat the game normally before I decide if I want to tackle trying to learn a speed run. Mm. I don't have Mario 3. I have Mario 1, I have Mario 2, I have Dr. Mario, Tetris, uh, Zelda 2 on NES, and then I have some Sega Genesis games and a few Sega CD games. What is Iron Sword? I don't even know what Iron Sword is, Ninja, but now I'm going to go find it. Just, just to make you donate $50. Impossible. Well, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't even know. Like I said, I've never beaten Mario, so... We have to find out if, if that's a possibility for me before before I uh, go to speedrunning it. Um, we have quite a few people today. 
So I think, I think it would be a really good time to do a raid. Are you guys with me? You guys are all still pretty active and maybe some of you could still use some creative background. We are going to raid Megan. Um, some of you who were here on July 4th and I said she must have been taking a holiday and I could not host her. Today we are going to raid her and the raid message is, um, 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 help me out here. Does anybody have a, I'm, I feel like I should be able to come up with a good raid message. Like I always think of good ones when I'm in other people's streams. No, we are not using what's the raid message as the raid message. Sure, I just did my nails. Or Colette's polished crew, or... Or what? Or let, let's see, what is she doing right now? Okay. No, let's just say... Okay, let's... uh. The raid message is going to be... No, okay. God, why is this the hardest part? Okay, this is... No, this this is the raid message because it works for me, and as you'll see, it'll work for her also. I hope she's not getting ready to, to end stream here. No, she's still doing some things. Okay, this is the raid message. And I am initiating the raid. So, I hope you guys enjoy her. She uses a lot of nail polishy things in her keycaps. She is an awesome streamer. I've really been enjoying her lately. Um, of course, yes, you can, you can certainly throw in a beanie. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, stay updated the next couple days on Twitter for my next streams. I hope I'll see you guys again and have a great day.